Okay, let's get started. So, go deployment with Docker. <coughs> One of the really, really nice things about Go is Go compiles to mostly static binaries. Why mostly? Let me show you. That's a well. Ah, okay. That's that's a very standard Go program. That's the Hello World Go program. If you compile that program, you get an executable file. Hello. And if you run the LDD uh, command on that file, it says, "Hey, that's not a static binary. There are no dynamic libraries for me to load." So great. That means you can take this file, stick it on any uh, system with libc on it, and it will just work. So Go produces a fully static binary in this case. Um, so by the way, this is an extremely useful feature. Things like uh, Kubernetes rely on this, so that uh, etcd, for example, rely on this. Download the etcd binary, and you can run etcd, etcd for example. Very, very powerful feature. But there's a situation where we don't have a fully static binary. This is another program. If you use uh, the HTTP package, for example, very, very popular package, you call in the net HTTP package. Um, and let's say you get something, get a URL. You compile this and, whoa, what's happening? LDD says, I need... Linux VDSO, Lite Ptred, Lite SO6, Lite64, what, whatever you have there. That means with the HTTP library, Go is not fully static. You need those libraries to run, otherwise your program will not run. So HTTP get in this case, when you compile it, is a dynamic binary. So static is good, nothing else to do. <coughs> dynamic not so good. You must make sure that all the dependencies, all the dependent libraries are present on your target system. Otherwise, it won't run. So we must make sure you have the, those dependencies and the right versions of those dependencies. Fortunately, uh, by the way, I'm sure somebody will ask, how about Go 1.5? Same situation with Go 1.5 by Tridel. Yeah. Fortunately, all those libraries are standard libraries. And if you're deploying to any Linux host, which are reasonably recent, HTTP GET will just work as though it is a static binary, but it's not because all the target libraries are on the target host, if you have a relatively recent host. This is my pain. I love a third-party library called 0MQ. It's an extremely good uh, messaging library. So package main import 0MQ, that's the GitHub address. Mm -hmm. And I call a 0MQ function, 0MQ new context, that's just to create a 0MQ connection. And whoa, all those dependencies, which means I cannot just simply deploy my binary. I need to have, for example, live 0MQ. Well, when you think about it, it's reasonable on the target host. So how to solve this problem without facing the DLL help or the shared library help? Before using Go, I was a Java developer. And for those of you who are not Java developers, there's this rather interesting tool called the Java Archive in Java. Uh, interestingly, a Java Archive shortens to Java and you put all the dependencies over. You can put all the dependencies in one nice jar file, and when you deploy the jar, uh, it just runs. Um, Elasticsearch uses this technique. So you just download one single jar file, run it, and Elasticsearch is on your system. Yeah, that's fine for Java. So we could think of a jar file for Go, but how about Ruby? How about Python? How about your favorite language? Fill in the blanks. So that's not obviously scalable. We can't have a jar file for all these different languages. Or can we? 
in comes Docker. Docker is a standardized Linux container format. There have been other Linux containers before, uh, LXC containers, but this was the first time they came up with a binary format, uh, which does quite a few things and gained extreme popularity, Docker. So I would call it the de facto standard Linux container format. So what does that mean? Docker, this is a survival kit. There's this thing called a Docker image. A Docker image is, think of it like an operating system image. Those of you old enough will remember Norton Ghost, right? So think of it like a Norton Ghost image. Your, your binaries are in that image. But there's a bit more. There's a Docker container as well. So what's the difference between a Docker image and a Docker container? A Docker container is a configured runtime instance built from that image. So the container is your runtime. Your image is the source. The runtime has configuration. The image generally doesn't have configuration. Generally, <coughs> you can build configuration to the image as well. But enough talking, time to show. So this is just a reminder that I need to have Docker running. In order for you to use Docker, you need to have Docker installed on your target system. Just like if you have a Java file to deploy, you need to have Java in the target system. So in this case, the cost or the price is you need to download Docker, which is a static binary written in Go. Uh, just deploy it in your target system and Docker is running. So, um, in order to build an image, you have this thing called a Docker file. So the Docker file says, from Ubuntu 14.04, that's a standard Docker image. I want to add my library 0MQ. Mm. I want to add my hello application to user bin. And my entry point, which is stated by the command, CMD command there, is user bin hello. Um, so that basically what the slide says. So let's build the image. That's my build script. Essentially, the important stuff is here. Ooh. Docker build minus T. Minus T means I tag the image with my name. And in this case, the program name and the version, version number or version code. So let's run this. That gets into my directory, and I'll run my image build script. So the nice thing about Docker is that's the build. It's pretty fast. Uh, I cheated. There's a cache. It downloaded the entire Ubuntu image. Since it's already on my system, it doesn't download it again. And rebuilding the thing was that fast. Well, maybe a second or so. We want to make sure that the image really is present. So let's use the docker images command. And fair enough, well, Suyin hello is there. You can see Suyin hello there. It was built, well, I rebuilt it something like how many minutes ago. So how do we use this image and run the container? The command is this, docker run, dash dash rm, which means remove the container after you're done with it. Uh, I give my <laughs> container the name hello1, and I give them the image, suyin hello, that image name. So let's run that. Ah, no surprise, hello go. All right. So go runs in a container, in your target system. So containers are persistent. If you don't erase that container, it stays on disk. You turn off the power, turn back the power, container still there. So let me show you container persistence. I have a second container called hello2. It 
it still runs. But now I'm not going to run it from start, from, from, a, from the beginning, from the fresh. I'm just going to start an existing container. Let me clear this again so you can. And it runs up. So by this time, you must be asking, what's the price? Is there an overhead between running bare Go binary and running Go inside a Docker container? So let's answer that question. What is the container startup overhead? So let's time it. This took 450 milliseconds, half a second to run. How about the bare binary? Four milliseconds. Hmm. So uh, you have wasted 400 milliseconds, half a second. Well, to me, that's a small price to pay for deployment independence. Um, Always good practice to get rid of containers you don't need, otherwise they take up all your disk space. So to remove the Hello2 container, just remove it. And that is a crash course in Docker deployments. Questions? Yes. I'm actually also a Go and Docker lover. Hey. And um, I started to use this um, image Builder from uh, CenturyLint that actually helps you build your image, uh, your doc your Golang image, mm -hmm. and builds uh, then an image from uh, scratch uh -huh. in uh, Docker. Then your images are not uh, dwelling on uh, Ubuntu; they are dwelling on scratch, so there's nothing. And then they are, their size is like 15 megs, yes. five to 15 megs. Yes, and uh, then deployment is really easy too, of course, and yeah. uh, combined with CoreOS, then you have a full system, very, very, very lean, and... Uh, yes, this, this fella knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, the beautiful thing about Docker is you can, you can build your image from scratch. Um, there's, a, there's a document called Linux from scratch. Just include the libraries and just include the binaries you absolutely need, and then you have a tiny... Uh, Docker image. Actually, the the yeah the company Century Links, uh, Century Link Labs, I think, mm -hmm. is doing everything for you. You just have to uh, build the image uh, through their Golang builder, and then you. Have Thank you, Century Links, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll it's keep really uh, amazing to to do so many images, and then you don't if there is any issue, security issues with uh, Ubuntu or whatever, you mm. don't depend on that at all. And if you are serious about running Docker. The operating system to run Docker, built for running Docker, is called CoreOS. It's a very nice, uh, stripped-down operating system. It has no package manager. Uh, it only runs Docker. And if you're serious about multi-host deployment, there's a Google project called Kubernetes. Also very nice, but don't do it for production yet. Not quite ready. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think it's Xiaoshong's turn. Any other questions? If not, thank you. Uh, sorry. Oh, yes. Would you recommend building the um, binary in the Docker or just copy it into the Docker image? Oh, in this case, I built the binary on my host system and I copied it into the Docker image. Um, Go is actually very portable. The only reason why Go needs Docker is third-party libraries. So if you do have third-party libraries, it's good to copy all those third-party libraries and encapsulate it in a Docker container then you will go wherever your image goes. That's the main advantage. It's a jar file for everything Linux. Thank you.